Frame building is the art of creating a bicycle frame from a number of tubes or certain materials that by themselves would be useless. Now around the world there are thousands of highly skilled people able to do this, but there are a select few who are considered to be among the very best of the best and create true works of art. So let's take a look at some of the best frame builders in the world. It's pretty tricky to know where to start, so I've decided to highlight a skilled craftsperson or a specialist company who each work in a different material so that we can see as many of the different options that are out there. First up, titanium frames from Lithuanian company Wits and Custom Tie Cycles and their skilled father and son frame builders. Now if I say the name Vidmantas Zukaskas, many of you will have absolutely no idea who I'm talking about, but this is someone who has been building frames from the mid 90s and at one point was said to be making frames for Colnago before they moved their production out to Asia. After that, he continued to specialize in titanium frame building for other brands, but over time built such a reputation that he now receives orders for bespoke tailor-made frames from all around the world. His son eventually became involved and together they created Whitson Custom Tie Cycles and they sell their bespoke frames. Steel next, don't worry, I wasn't gonna miss this off our list. A custom made steel frame can be a real work of art. And some of my favorites are from Officina Battaglin. This is the Italian brand of custom steel bikes founded by legendary Italian cyclist Giovanni Battaglin. The company build steel bikes to the specifications and exact measurements required by the customers. And they've got these amazing chrome finishes to them. The Power Plus Evo is one of their frame sets that claims to be the first fully customized steel bike to have integrated cables. And it's constructed from Columbus GB81 tubing, which is made to custom Officina Battalion specifications. Now steel is one of the oldest materials used in bike manufacturing and has been popular pretty much ever since the bike was invented. Now brazing is the technique used by many frame builders and this is a metal joining process in which two or more metal items are joined together by melting and flowing a filler material into the joint. Now this filler metal has a lower melting point than the two parts being joined together and then you create one complete component. When we think of carbon frames, generally we're thinking of bigger manufacturers and bigger brands, but being a very hands-on process means that a lot of skill is involved. And then there are plenty of smaller companies out there making more unique or custom bikes. Generally speaking, carbon bikes are constructed using the process of wrapping pliable sheets of woven carbon fibers round preformed shapes and into molds. A resin is then injected and cures to form a solid shape, mimicking that of the mold. One of the smaller companies that make carbon frames is Argonaut Cycles, based in Oregon in the US. Now they say that their custom carbon bikes are designed to last you a lifetime. They have a small team of 12 people that design, test and build all of their bikes in-house. Created by Ben Farber, who began his frame building journey using steel as his material of choice. But in the search for improved performance characteristics and greater customization options, he then turned to carbon fiber. Their RM3 road bike gives you the option for a full custom spec frame and bike setup, or you can simply choose one of their own 12 sizes, which well, it's presumably a more budget friendly option, but it still gives you access to a handmade carbon bike. Next up is aluminium, a material that many of us will just associate to entry level or mid range bikes, but it is still the material of choice for many of the world's best frame builders. Legend by Bertoletti is a company that was founded in 2009. It's owned and run by Marco Bertoletti, but it was back in 1971 that he began his apprenticeship working alongside skilled craftspeople to develop the skills that are required to create these beautiful frames. 
Every frame that they make is unique and Bertoletti say they produce no more than 250 frames per year. Now, interestingly, they also work with aluminium, steel, titanium and carbon fiber, which is, is pretty rare to see because all of this stuff requires different materials and different techniques and different equipment. The process to weld aluminium is called TIG welding. This uses electricity to create an arc between a non-combustible tungsten electrode and the metal being welded. That arc is then shielded by a flow of inert gas, which is typically argon. That section of aluminium then melts, and at the same time, the frame builder feeds in a welding filler rod to form the weld bead. And when done correctly, this is how we end up with those beautiful welds which we see on some frames. TIG welding is also a similar process that is used to make steel and titanium frames too. Although when TIG welding titanium, you need to have an oxygen free environment. Okay, so we've covered titanium, carbon fibre, steel and aluminium. I guess the next obvious material for a frame is Wood? Yeah, a wooden bike. There are two examples that come to mind here, the bamboo bike and also the Tumpa bike, both of which have featured on GCN before and Sai has taken a closer look at. But the art of using a sustainable natural material to make a bike is something that I think is, is, is pretty special. Now in the instance of the Tumpa cycles, their wooden gravel bike is built from ash. It's designed and made by Andy Dix, who previously was a furniture maker. It's constructed with a number of interlocking sections, which are then glued all together and then finished with multiple layers of sealer and a clear lacquer to protect the wood. Weighing in at 1,700 grams, it's far from the lightest of frames out there, but it's comparable to a steel gravel bike frame. And just like a traditional frame, this one is hollow, but many of its sections have a tube wall thickness between three and four millimeters, which is quite thick compared to your equivalent steel tube wall thickness that's much closer to 0.5 millimeters. Well, that's a brief look at some of the frame builders that I've picked out. And if it's given you an appetite to find out more about frame building and the people behind this skilled art form, well, then it's well worth heading over to GCN Plus because we've got a fantastic series called Makers where we meet all the incredible craftspeople from around the world that are behind some of these incredible frames. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please let me know in the comment section down below. And if you didn't, well, I'm sure you'll let me know anyway. But be sure to share this video with all your friends. And I'm also keen to hear what sort of frame material you choose if you were having your own custom bike made. Right, that's it from me. See you in the next video. See you later.